What will a major financial windfall mean for Dick Grayson and Bloodhaven as a whole? Well, let's hop into the pages of Nightwing issue number 79 and find out together, shall we? So then, as we join the comic, Nightwing is looking back on the rich and interesting life that he's lived, and he says the one thing that kind of tied every chapter of his life together was the idea of the safety net. Yes, it didn't matter what job he had or what costume he was wearing at the time, Dick always had amazing people around him to catch him when he fell, be it the flying Graysons and the circus folk, be it his father and mentor Batman, be it his other father and mentor Alfred. And speaking of Alfred, because of his will, Dick Grayson just inherited a massive fortune from the former butler, currently making him richer than Batman as it stands right now. No word about Julia Pennyworth, Alfred's blood daughter, and how she feels about the whole thing. Hopefully we see that later. Dick also just so happens to be a pet owner right now, and he's managing to get back in touch with Barbara Gordon, his on-again, off-again love interest. The two decide to grab some pizza together and talk about what Dick is going to do next, and hey, look at that, the pizza place is called Marv and George as a reference to Marv Wolfman and George Perez. Also, I could be wrong, but does the guy working there not also look a lot like Dan DiDio? Man, his career sure took a turn after leaving comics, am I right? I love the little stuff too here when Dick finally realizes that he's so rich he doesn't need to buy pizza by the slice anymore and can buy a whole pizza instead. Barbara and Dick decide to eat in the shadow of one of Bloodhaven's most well-respected statues, one honoring the whalers that founded the town. Dick says that he always liked the sentiment that was in Bloodhaven, this idea that regular people can battle monsters every day and come out the other side. Dick also confides in Barbara that at the end of the day he always felt Bruce could have done more with his amazing fortune, but he was too busy punching bad guys to look at the bigger picture. Furthermore, Dick is only just now getting back to himself after losing his memory. And Dick starts to wonder about his own personal legacy and the mark he'll leave behind. Oh, sure, he saved some people, even saved the world a couple times, but if he still thought he was Rick and never got his memory back, would it have mattered? Dick also gets a chance to put his money where his mouth is when a homeless guy and his son asks him for some change. Dick doesn't actually carry much cash around with him, but he figures, hey, I'm a rich guy now, I can actually feed you. In fact, I can feed all your homeless friends, too, while I'm at it. Ultimately, it's a win-win for the community, too. These hungry people get to eat so they don't have to beg, and oh yeah, this failing pizza place now just got a huge influx of business, so it gets to stay open, too. Of course, act of charity or not, that still doesn't change the fact that Bloodhaven is still very much a rough town, and while Dick is celebrating with his homeless pizza party, some of the kids decide to steal his wallet. Honestly, though, they got off easy as the original guy that asked Dick for change in the first place leaves with his son only to be accosted by a brand new supervillain who goes by the codename Heartless. Insert your own Kingdom Hearts joke here. Heartless more than lives up to his name, too, literally snatching the heart out of this guy's chest like he was frickin' Molaram or something. Dick vows to hit the street and get his wallet back, even though there's maybe only 30 bucks and a bunch of unused business cards in there, but, you know, it's the spirit of the thing that truly matters. Barbara can't go along with him right now, mainly because she's too busy laughing with the other members of the Bat family in a group text. Yes, they have a group text, isn't that wholesome? But also because, in keeping with what we've seen in the other Batman books, Barbara can't put a lot of stress on her back implant right now, lest she want to end right back up in the wheelchair. Nightwing does some rooftop gymnastics and manages to track down the kids. Unfortunately for them, they've already picked their next target, and they couldn't have picked it worse. Salvatore Moroni. Famous Gotham gangster who has now resurfaced here in Bloodhaven to give congratulations to the daughter of Tony Zuko, who has just so happened to become the new mayor-elect of Bloodhaven after Blockbuster killed the old mayor in the previous issue for not following orders. This means Nightwing's evening has quickly changed from apprehend some prepubescent pickpockets to actually try and save these kids' lives from murderous gangsters. After some car hopping and a quick little chase, Dick does act actually managed to follow back on up with the pickpockets. It seems that they're all living under a bridge in a massive homeless encampment made up almost entirely of children. That's weird enough on its face, but it's made even stranger by the fact that a little girl asked if he's the man who's been out there stealing hearts. Ooh, this definitely thickens the plot as things come to a close. And so that was Nightwing issue number 79, everybody. And once again, Tom Taylor and company manages to turn in another real winner.
Manor, there's something so really warm and wholesome about seeing such a positive guy like Dick Grayson given all the power and resources in the world to make some real lasting change in his community. It's a nice little evolution on the oh-so-classic comic book power fantasy from what would you do if you had the physical prowess to beat up criminals to what would you do if you had the power to actually stop crime at a more grassroot level. I like getting to see Maroney and Zuko and all the traditional Gotham mobsters get taken out of mothballs again. I feel that's a set of villains that is so often overlooked and forgotten, and that's before we even talk about the new villain, Heartless, who seems pretty damn creepy. I'd give this another very well-deserved 8.5 out of 10, and while some people may think it's a little early to call, I think Nightwing is back in a big bad way, and if you've been sitting on the fence, you most definitely need to come off and get in. Hey there everyone, Cape Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps drive engagement and helps me out too. Also, if you are a patron, which you can become for as little as a dollar a month, you will get exclusive content that no one else can ever see, and you'll get to see the Comic Multiverse podcast before anyone else too. You can check out all this and more down in the description. And until next time everyone, this has been Cape Jewel, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.